much as I thought I could plan a podcast, that is not going to happen. I do not have the mindset to sit here. Chop up, block, block, how I'm going to tell you about weight loss and weight gain. Good evening on this March 15th, Tuesday, 2022. The time is 11.22 p.m. And welcome to Early in the A.M. with Isha. Somber day. I did a lot of running around today and yesterday. Because this Friday, March 18th, is my Aunt Michelle's funeral. My mom's. Uh, biological sister full biological sister her only full biological sister and this was very unexpected it was very unexpected we didn't see it coming it wasn't something long and drawn out we talked to her on a Friday and by uh, we get a phone call on a Sunday that she was in the hospital brain dead I'm not going into details about what happened because those are personal and that's a family matter. But let's just say that in like a by Wednesday, they you know she was they pulled the plug and that was it. And I'm kind of in this place where I'm looking for signs and things. I'm looking at old pictures of her, recent pictures of her, seeing if I see something out of the ordinary that's not her. It's still her. (sighs) So. And yesterday morning, I actually, I woke up and it hit me a little bit. And I hate feeling like this. I'm so, my nerves are so worked up. And I'm so operating off stress all the time. No working on stress and on pain and on opposition. I'm always on that force. It's not even personal. It's just a force I'm always on from, you know, having to get over things that I want. Having to do things in life. And then because what's most important like maybe having a job that I just don't want and it's just against my nature and everything that's good about me and it's just against that but I have to work anyway to pay my bills or be homeless all those things that challenge my spirit to the core I always have to get over it in opposition always got to get over it there's always something to challenge something I want having to get over it, having to starve myself, not eating correctly, not exercising correctly. Now I'm at this point in my body is just on this tipsy. My joints always ache, my my muscles are always on fire, and it's like I'm always pushing myself past it. Pushing over it, pushing over it. Don't don't even say I'm not gonna say anything about the mental. I'm not even gonna go there what's going on upstairs, but it's hard you you challenge yourself to be celibate you say you know I'm tired of being a whore I'm tired of sleeping with random guys that I meet online guys at a club just on the street when you're in a corner store anything you get so tired of the emptiness and since early this morning I'm sitting here like I'm having another one of those episodes where it's like I'm like a raging ape in a cage on the inside sexually but I'm always on force to get past that. You know, it wakes up in me. And it's like, it's beating me down. It's beating me around. It's always on peak. And then I'm always, every second, having to acknowledge where it is and then get over it. So I'm in control of it. So I'm not out of my mind. And then there's some some days where the thing sleeps and I'm okay. And then there's other days where if it smells a guy. If if a guy's voice is on the phone, it's like, ooh, ooh, and, you know, like it's about to get some. I'm just like, oh, Jesus Christ, anybody, anything. And it's it's terrible. Any guy, literally it happened about a homeless guy. I thought I was going to lose my mind. I was like, no, we are not having this over about a homeless guy. We are not having these images in our head about homeless men. We are not going there. I'm like tapping myself on the side of the head. I'm like, okay, I get it. So I know I have this ape. I know I have this gorilla. But I have a, a me, myself, I just, I'm just two steps ahead of it every day. And that's my fight. Two steps ahead of it. Two steps. 
because it pushes me all the way up to the to that point, and I'm never ready for it. I, I'm never ready for it. But I'm so ready to not fall and to not fail that I just push three. If it can push two, I can push three. If it can push three, I can push five. And that's what we, we just get to the fingertips. It comes with four fingers. I just grab the entire fist. I'm like, no, that's not going to happen today. And that's just what I've been going through. <clears throat> Having to push yourself, trying to proclaim yourself better at everything you've been through. It doesn't work. At the end of the day, it's like, like today I went to the mall today. And, and believe me, I haven't been to the mall in years. And it's like this, it feels like a nightmare to me. It's like youth against old age. And it's not even that. I don't feel old in my spirit. Like, in my creativity, I don't feel old. But everywhere else, I feel so ancient. I feel so, un- I feel so old. I hate feeling like that. I feel old and I know it's because of what I signed up for. The contract I signed and I didn't know what I was signing. It's always that. It's always down to that technical work, the bottom line. What did you sign? What did it say? can't tell you I just wanted the credit card or I can't tell you I needed a job or I needed that car or I had to go to the store I had and then all these you know responsibilities come back at you well you owe us this and you owe this you say you would do this why aren't you doing it and (sighs) our vacations officially today officially was it today no four four days ago it's been two years since I left ECS and I've been uh, unemployed for two years But I've only been on unemployment for about, let's see, from April to, let's see, from April to, from April of 2020 till October of 2021, I was on uh, first regular unemployment. And then when that ran out, I was on PUA. And then that ran out on September 4th. So from uh, April 4th till September 4th of from April 4th, 2020 till September 20th, 2021, I was on unemployment. And then all of that ran out. And I saved as much as I could and I paid everything in the summers. But, you know, I'm on this thing where I didn't, the last chunk of money I got, let's see, a thousand, I had 3,700 plus 700 from my mom. We took $4,300 and we chopped down on my credit card bill. So now, you know, I had one of my credit cards was like max at like thirty four thirty four hundred dollars and we hit that one with seventeen fifty. So that one got chopped in half. So we mostly just came in and just whatever our the credit card was, we tried to put at least pay off at least half the balance. So we went in hard on the credit cards and I'm proud about that because that's my main issue. Is I have credit card debt and student loans and that's my issues. That's what I work with. But anyway. So, you know, I'm in the mall and I'm pushing myself. And I get to this place where my my, my muscles is on burn. My my joints are on bone, burn. They ache. And then I'm like, okay, take a rest. And then I'm like, I got to take like 60 more steps. How can I stop? And then my eyes, once my eyes see where I'm going, my body will force itself to meet whatever it is. And I get so tired of that. It's like, it's not even, it's like the eyes bigger than the stomach thing. I was like, I'm, it's at a place where it's, it's beyond comprehension. The drive is beyond me. But I do it anyway. Dangerous. Dangerous feeling that way. But yeah, I'm coping with the fact that I'm never going to see her again. And it's like, we've had a, like my whole entire life, We've had, you know, there's been distances between us. Like, I would go a month or two without seeing her, weeks without seeing her. One time I went, like, eight months without seeing her. And I got used to it being that way. But it's never the time where, you know, my mom didn't talk to her. I could pick up the phone to talk to her. And then she did. And that was just a realization in my head from one place to another. And I'm just coofing right now about it. It's a coofy thing to think about. Well, today it happened again. I told you about the gorilla. I'm not going to tell you the person. But, uh, 
really respectable married businessman. You know what I mean? Very respectable. Professional. I'm like, you know, I'm trying to, you know, be respectful and handle whatever the task is at hand. It's just that in, in the back of my mind is, ooh, 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 ooh. I'm just like, oh, God, not not right now. Not again. It's like, just, just let me say my piece and I'll leave you alone. I'm like, oh. There's nothing you can say that's going to help the situation. Because once it, once you get out, I got to go through the motions of getting you back in. And then I got to deal with the repercussions that come in from women's intuition. And that shit is something else. It's because I'm a woman. I should know. I already know. There's no way you can nip a gorilla like that unless you go out and have sex. But, oh, yeah, so that's the thing. You know what I mean? This gorilla, you know, bumping on the walls all the time, got my heart racing, my adrenaline rushing, my my sex organs throbbing. After a while, it keeps driving me past things. And then I keep reevaluating re blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I keep reevaluating my sexual experiences and the only thing I the, the craziest conclusion I come to is the emptiness. I'm like, yeah, I I, yeah, we went to the club and then empty. Well, yeah, I got with this guy and empty. It's like, nah, nah, he was good though, but empty. I'm just, yeah, well, you know, I did it with him, but he called me back and then five years later, nothing. And so it's a conclusion. It's like, okay. In my mind, I done exaggerated and hyped all these things up. And then I always drop down into this emptiness like a fishing pole. And then the line just drops into the water. And then the thing is just bobbing on top. So I'm just like, oh, that's what it is. I was like, I'm rushing into emptiness. I'm rushing from a crowded space into an open space. I'm like, look at all that space. Sex isn't like that. You don't breath, bust through the crowd to break out into, into emptiness. It's like, that's good if you need fresh air. That's good for outside, for exercise. But when it comes to intimate things, the sex, the last thing you want to do is run out to, into emptiness and be like, this is me. You don't want to do that. That's something where it, you get confused and flip-flops. There has to be something to hold on to. Because anybody who's alive on the inside or wants to be alive, when you get intimate, because intimacy means a lot more when you get older, you, you have to be able to hold on to something with that person. There's going to be transitions, awakenings. Uh, there's going to be things where you're going to awake in a moment. And you're like, what is this in a moment? And if you awake in a moment and the only thing you see is some Abe pumping on top of you and then there's nothing there but pain, you're like, oh, shit. That's all he had. We just ran out and I don't know how to stop it. You don't want to be at that place. You want to be somewhere where, where in a moment you wake up, you feel him. If you wake up anywhere out of the moment, he he knows that you're, and then he tenderly brings you back in. You want to know that there's something there. There's something building between you two, whether it's, you know, emotional, then it's, you know, physical or financial, all those things that's taken care of. So the moment is the moment, and it can be nipped, and it's not something that's, you know, exaggerated on everything. You're going to have this guy where as soon as you try to go to the next phase, he throws sex at you and you can't go nowhere. And then you you get tired. You you start thinking everybody is just an empty space. And then you don't go out no more. You find yourself becoming a homebody. Like, I'm so tired of going outside. I was like, my body is not an invitation into empty spaces. I'm like, I don't want to feel like that. I didn't learn it the traditional way. I didn't learn about relationships because I was in good relationships. I learned about relationships from being in bad That's what I learned about it from. From an ape beating me up all the time, I just got tough in that department. And somehow the toughness and the stress and always being enforced about things and always be in competition with the energies of society, always being that way forces you to the right place. Because you get tired of getting beat up just by assuming something or guessing something. And you're like, God, where's the right answer? And then God, in a really meek way, very, uh, in a way that's very allergic and adjacent to what society feels is right, to what man feels is right. It's in a space where 
very space where society ignores it. 